the pain points of basically, okay, why are you coming over to China? Cool. It's usually one of, you know, one of five things. So I already know that going ahead of time, I can, I can strategize based on those pain points, what to prioritize. Code agents, welcome to another episode. This one is with Chime. We've got Randy Carroll. You already know his familiar face. He's got the amazing menu for cookout in the background. Just <laughs> so you do want to order anything. And then we've got Adam Frank. He's a good friend of ours. We've become even closer over the last year since we discovered his prowess with Chime. And this guy's legit. I was uh, very surprised in a good way of how well he uses Chime. And today we want to dive deeper into making it painless to switch because I switched from Commissions Inc. to Chime about a year and a half ago, about a year and a half ago, right? Yeah, yeah, just over, yeah. And holy cow, don't, oh. <laughs> if only you had known Adam then. I mean, they make it so difficult to switch, not Chime, but you know, Sync made it very difficult for us to switch over. And it wasn't a pleasant experience. Jake, who's running the webinar right here, he runs uh, our, our databases. And that was not easy. We had complaints from our agents. It was a nightmare. There you go. Uh, complaints from our agents, complaints from our clients, right? Mm -hmm. And like I posted yesterday in Lab Code Agents, switching CRMs is just as bad, I put, as moving and most people said it's worse. And some people said it's, <laughs> some people said it's worse than divorce. And well, hey, just like you hire movers, you can hire. Is Adam next to me or Dr. Richard yeah. Boss Tristan? Yeah, down. Is that Adam. I mean, yeah. I mean, uh, Randy, if you want to really get into that, let me know. <laughs> as, oh, as I don't have the immersive. I don't have the immersive one. Jake has it. All right, Jake uh, has the controls. All right. And then when I, I then when I post when I posted yesterday, I was like, yeah, I've been with Chime for like you know just about two years almost, it'll be two years in November, and it took me an hour to get up and running, and everyone's like, wait, what? I'm like, yeah, dude. <laughs> it just, let's go. <laughs> yeah, I mean, really, it, it really is like that. So, Adam, welcome. You're, you're a you. Chime user. You're a master Chime user, because anytime I have a question, I just tag you, because I don't know the answer. <laughs> no, I see that. <laughs> I'm like, Randy, I don't, know the, I don't know the answer. I'm just going to tag Adam and hope he knows, and he does. Makes sense. And generally, yeah, generally he does. So Adam, welcome. Let's get into it. Switching from CRMs. What makes it so much easier with, with what you do? With what I do as far as, 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 far as what it is, like as helping as, agents transfer over? Yeah, as far as transferring all the data over, why is it so much easier with you? Because, you know, I'm looking at things still and I was like, it's not easy. Like, let's just mm -hmm. give an example because it comes up a lot. Mm -hmm. Command, right? People are like, oh, I'm in command. Should I be using command? Should I be using Chime? What the hell should I be using? And I'm like, well, my, my suggestion is switch everything that you can from command over to Chime, right? And I'm with Keller. And that's difficult in and of itself. Like, why? How? Why would I even want to do that? But you simplify it. Where do you start? Where, where do you start with this whole process of switching? I start with a strategy. All right, because Anita says switching CRMs in 20 minutes, you must be super techie. I mean, Anita, he is, but he wants to also <laughs> simplify it for us, right? Yeah, Adam, yeah, you're, yeah. you're talking to us here. How do you simplify this for us? Where do you start? I take a look at where the agent, and when I say agent, I also mean a broker if they got like a small firm or something, but um, I take a look at where the agent is now, what they're doing with their uh, database, as far as processes in their current system, whatever. And I, I'm, I'm, I'm like CRM ignorant. Like, I don't care what you use. If you want to go to Chime, I can help you. It doesn't matter what it is. Um, so I take a look at what's going on currently and then the pain points of basically, okay, why are you coming over to Chime? Cool. It's usually one of, you know, one of five things. So I already know that going ahead of time, I can, I can strategize based on those pain points what to prioritize. And basically say, okay, cool. So when we move this over, what we're going to do is make this change first in Chime 
so that when everybody moves and hits and things start running, we don't have anything else to do. That's just, it, it, it's basically strategizing to maintain efficiency and accuracy in the migration of system A to system B by making sure that the destination is correct first and the processes that could be automated just as a matter of design are going to go the right way that we planned and any contingency that we have in mind is already addressed where, okay, if this happens, that's cool. We can just toggle the smart plans off. It'll be fine. Right. It's right. one thing like, like, like data without direction is completely useless. That's toilet paper to me. Migration without a strategy is the same thing. It, it's, it, it's nothing. It, it's just, it's, it's a complete mess. You're setting yourself up for, and we typically, when you go from, you know, either a brokerage to a brokerage, or in this case, a CRM to a CRM, you're doing so to improve the, the quality of your business, efficiency, effectiveness, profitability, and hopefully get keys to a yacht someday, right? Like, we need to have a plan for that to happen, and not just kind of throw a bunch of darts at a wall and hope they stick. Yeah. I'd like to unpack this plan a little bit, yes. because <laughs> being in the CRM space, as long as I have, people have had this imaginary idea that all you do is export the leads and then import the leads and like, that's it. And of course, that's what any CRM salesperson is gonna tell you, but what is the actual plan behind that? When you export your leads from ABC database, what is the first thing you need to do with, with that list? And how can you make that easy? Typically what I do is I look at their database and I, I see that they are, um, very much into uh, micro categorizing their leads. So okay. what I mean by that, so, so typically you're going to have essentially like a status, a pipeline, a bucket, some kind of that okay. you know, terminology. And that's essentially the point at which they are on the transaction, right? Curiosity to close, registration to pass point, essentially. So mm -hmm. I look at how, how granular that is and how, how much time they're kind of wasting in that. And I'm like, oh, okay. Let's shrink that up a little bit. Let's simplify, simplify this. On the spreadsheet, let's address it. Let's rename it. You can do, I believe it's, um, uh, there's a, a find replace. You can do like all F or control or uh, command F and they could do replace and say, okay, like let's say something is called nurture in your current system and okay. you want to call it following up in, in Chime, right? Mm -hmm. You can just find and replace and say, okay, every instance of the status in this column that says, nurture we're going to change that over to following up and it's a one and done and you got mm -hmm. thirty thousand changes right like that so yeah so let, let, let me let me pull one thing out of what you just said when you change databases aka when you switch to chime this is an opportunity to simplify your crm like you said like adam said people like to uh, what was the word you use? Micro organize. Micro categorize. Yep. Yeah. Micro categorize your CRM. You have got too many tags that are meaningless. Uh, we went over this the other day in the group, Adam, you were saying, yeah, there's a, there's a group of tags that have zero people applied. I just delete the tags because it does nothing but junk up the space. So and if you, if you, you need it all, again, add it back. It's not, yeah, a big yeah. if you need it again, sure. It's, it, it's, it's a nothing process to add it back. Um, but this is an opportunity to clean up your database and start fresh with an organized system that actually gives you an opportunity to run a business with a clean and organized database. Yeah. So continue. Sorry, I know I interrupted, but no, no, you're good. You're good. Um, sometimes I just get out of myself here, but um, so it's, it's basically you know organizing the things, and, and it's it's kind of like so I moved over from KB Core, and with EXP we get KB Core included in our brokerage if we got option for it. And I moved over from that to, to Chime and they use different terms for, you know, even, even if they don't use pipelines, they call it a status. And there's, I think there's like a seven, seven different statuses there. Yeah. Well, there's, you can create your own pipelines in Chime so they can be unlimited, you know? So it's like, okay, I get really excited about that stuff because I get to do what I want, but let's be practical about this, right? So- yeah. You know, it, it just kind of renaming thing and, and making sure that the destination organization is simple, searchable, and effective, so that you don't have like buyer under contract, seller under contract. You know, a buyer contingency. It's like do, do just contingencies, and the lead type is going to filter out from there. It'll be fine. You know, well, you, don't, you don't have to have all these extra filters in there. 
Adam, mm -hmm. typically we're, we're talking to agents that have just a database. Let's say, let's say a small database of about a thousand people. Okay. Let's just say that. Yep. They've got a thousand people in their current CRM and they're just going to switch them over to, let's say they're coming into China. You typically categorize them. Well, typically export them from, I'm just going to use my example, export them from Commissions Inc. And into an Excel sheet and then categorize them correctly at the top with the right names. And mm -hmm. then you import them over to Chime, right? Yep. That's the simplest thing. But what about my notes? And what about, here's where it killed us. What about their search, their home search, right? Because transferring that was, Randy knows, it was, it was terrible, right? Because we couldn't get all that info from Commission Zinc or they didn't release it. Mm -hmm. So that was, that was a very difficult. Randy, you yeah. want to say something? Yeah, I do. Let me add to that. So we're actually the only company in the space that I'm aware of that offers an advanced data import. So we do have, it takes a little bit longer, as you can probably imagine, but we do have a team that if, if you have a big database and you're super concerned about losing property alerts and so on, um, we have a team that will go in and get, get that specific information from your existing CRM and port it over into Chime. The, the, the downfall there is only that it takes a little bit longer. So you have to hold on to your old CRM about a month or two longer. Um, but we'll, we'll port over that, that property search information. Yeah, so, right. and, and really, a lot of it depends on what data is allowed to be exported by the previous CRM. Some love to yeah. hold on to that data. Others don't care. So That's if they don't true. care, it's just a matter of matching the fields and you're off and running like, like nobody's business. Do you use do you use something like PySync? Do you use Zapier or do you use just a simple Excel sheet? I just, I just draw it out. Typically they draw it out to a CSV and then I'll take a look and see what the data is there. Um, a lot of times the CSV file will be limited and they the, the agent has to actually go to the CRM company and basically say, I want all of the exact, because if you actually read the terms and conditions of the CRM, they, you own all of that data. So it's yours. So if they're not allowing you to export that, yeah, they're, kind of in a, they're kind of in a sticky situation. It doesn't look good for them. Let's put it that way. Um, Got it. So you can basically say like, I, I need an export of that. And the tech team has every tech team in the CRM, they, they have the ability to export all of that data. Um, so don't let them tell you that they don't. Um, I know better. So all right. um, and they'll that. push oh. back on you. They'll push back. So you have yeah. to push back on them. They'll say, no, sorry, we don't have that. Yes, you do. Give it to me. Mm -hmm. Yep. So um, and it's stand, stand your ground because uh, they, they, they're going to they're going to resist, but they have no reason to. Um, so once once you have the data and getting all that stuff on there, I mean, one thing, one of the big features in Chime is that uh, import when you're uh, manually importing with the CSV file, you can select to add to a um, uh, add to a group, which that should be created. If your CRM doesn't have the functionality of a group, add that column and add that to your like add that to your database. Otherwise, everybody's going to get sorted into a group or basically added as a no group. And then once in Chime, you're going to have to kind of sort from there, which is not a big deal. It, 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 it's not as bad. What again? I'm a big fan of trying to do as much as you can in the spreadsheet. And then once you get in the chime, you're going to be good to go. When you import it, you're going to have the available, or you're going to have the option to send a welcome email. This is extremely important here. Tristan says, pay attention. <laughs> um, so there is, right? I love that. So there is a very generic get you started welcome email in chime for both seller and buyer leads. When you're migrating your database, I recommend setting up an announcement, talk differently to buyers than you would sellers because they're different and set that announcing that you are upgrading your system so that you can better serve your current past and future clients. Mm -hmm. That welcome email is extremely important to your database because it has the login information. So you need to basically create your, you know, essentially the, the spirit of communication that I just said Hey, upgrade into a database. It's going to be awesome. That's why you're getting this essentially. And by doing so, you're basically, you know, 
adding that level of service, like, hey, I'm upgrading and I'm, I'm, I'm increasing my value to you. What you're also doing is when you have 87,000 people in your spreadsheet that you put in and you're like, yeah, welcome to my thing, boom, they're actually getting a relevant thing because you're gonna have people in your database that signed up on um, Facebook, lead forms kicked in and really have never been to your website, mm-hmm. right? So mm-hmm. when they say, hey, well, you know, welcome to my website, blah, blah, they're like, who the hell is this? Like, I have no idea who this person is. So again, strategies so that when things hit and you can take action and basically start kicking butt, do it. One of the last things, like, like, like it's like usually like step last that I like to do when I'm doing a migration for somebody mm-hmm. is the import. Get the follow-up in place first, get your property alert set, your market reports, your snapshot, your website, everything else. It's the last thing you want to do. It's like when you go hunting up north, the last thing you ever pack is your rifle and your ammunition because that's the shit you're going to forget. Sorry, <laughs> um, but it happened to my uncle like three years in a row. It was hilarious. So, um, but the last thing you want to do is import your database because then you got your people, you got everything turned on, that engine and chime is running. And okay. when everything hits, they got the welcome email sent out as appropriate. Let it go for 24 hours to just catch up with everybody, depending on the size of your database. Once that goes in, then I recommend shooting a bomb bomb video, personalizing that and changing it so that now, instead of going to people that, you know, have been sent out, now it's everybody going forward in the future that registers actually on your website. And now you can use that as your generic, hey, welcome to my, you know, real estate website. I'm here to help kind of a thing and just send oh, that help that way. I like so that. that strategy is just doing it ahead of time. And again, if you just kind of cram in here and people are, I mean, I've, I've seen it many times. And then after the fact, they come to me for help, which I can still help only to a point. But if you want to look like a rock star throughout this whole process, come to me. All right. Uh, so question. Oh, go ahead, Andy. I have one. That's for you. All right, good. Well, you're like, Whoa. <laughs> I have a question from Peggy. She's asking a great question. And this one could go to both of you. It says, when setting up the clients, do you have, you have to issue a password for each client, right? When you're transferring them over, how does that work? Chime uses the phone number in the, in the account profile to do that. My understanding is that there is no phone number in there. It will create one of those gobbledygook ones. Randy can correct me if I'm wrong, but that's my understanding. No, you're right. Just a random assortment. Yep. Um, and and like Adam was saying, when you're uploading a whole new list of leads to a new program, one of the most underrated opportunities is that you'll have people raise their hand who had never r- risen their hand before. Like, don't forget, you, you're going to shake the trees during this transition, and you're probably going to get opportunities out of it if you have a large enough database. Like, you're going to have people who either like the email <laughs> format better people who come and check out the new website and like it better, which is almost always the case because Chime has some of the best websites in the entire industry, bar none. Um, and deliverability as well. Yeah. Case, so, case study, I had, a, I had a guy with uh, EXP, Joe uh, Fair. He came over to Chime and when he uploaded his database and kicked everything out, he yeah. had a 300% increase in response in the first month he was using Chime, he took seven listings because what? people are like, basically, like, this is the first email. Yeah, we're ready to sell. They had been in his database in another system for over a year. And if the final sudden it was delivering, they're like, yeah, we're ready to sell, man. Come with the house. It's these, kind, it's these types of <laughs> stories that make people realize, like, just because system A has drip campaigns and system B has drip campaigns, it doesn't mean they're the same thing, right? Like... The three of us, me, Adam, and Tristan, could probably go build a system that has drip campaigns, but the the chances of them actually getting delivered and making it into your leads inbox would be very, very low. Gmail, especially Gmail, but all of your email servers are ramping up their spam protection because of the increase of, um, of spam that goes out. So you have to have a platform that's intelligent enough to realize, okay, we have to send these in a way that will actually make it to your leads inbox. And that's the kind of stuff we think about at Chime. That's probably not the kind of stuff a lot of other services think about because it's hard. It's hard. So they just don't do it. It's all about that strategy to help you succeed. All right. So let's talk about, 
let's talk about that strategy. Adam, what is it that, that you do to help, man? Because you weren't around when I switched, or I would have just done <laughs> you, I think, right? Right. Um, so I have I have a for hire service where I can assist people in migrating over to Chime. Um, between KB Core and Chime, I've done probably nearly a thousand different setups right now. Um, and I've, I've got some experience with it. And I used to do the cookie cutter type where it's basically like, you know, you pay somebody money and then here's the thing and hey, here you go. What I found doing that, just because that was kind of like the, the sub industry standard, was like people got in the car and like, I have no idea how to drive, like, I have no idea how to use this. Right, they have no idea what's going on. True, too. So, I'm pivoting, and I basically during my pivot, I said, "Okay, look, not only am I going to actually basically hold your hand and walk you through exactly what to do, but in doing so, you're going to learn the system faster. You're going to learn the system better, and this is going to be a true customized setup to fit the way that you do business or that you want to do business." within the powers of Chime. And you're gonna realize that perhaps your business model may change a little bit once you actually come over to Chime and you start learning about things. Because I can go in and I can, okay, cool. Yeah, give me PDFs of your drip campaigns. I can you know, throw those all in for you. But when we actually take them and I'm like, okay, well, here's how this works. Then when you wanna build a smart plan in the future, you've done that 12 times. It's fine. Like it, you build one or two, you know what you're doing. So it, 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 it's getting, giving them that like concierge kind of service the knowledge, the experience, making sure that, hey, like the one hour blocks, let's do this together. I'm here. So you get the questions. It's not this cookie cutter. Okay, cool. Awesome. Um, you know, thanks. And I got 87 questions a day afterwards. So that's, that's it. It's basically a guided setup so that you can be effective, efficient, more profitable and learn more faster. So the learning curve, like it's going to be pretty sharp. And by pretty sharp, I mean, you're going to be like, Holy crap. So but you're going to come out of that, the, the, those sessions, whether it's three, four, 10, whatever you need, you're going to be already an intermediate level user by the time we get done with the setup. And you're going to have a whole better idea what's going on in your system and in your business. Uh, do you, you set this up and you also set up smart plans so that we can communicate with the database the right way. What, what do you set up? Take me through that, please. So I have, yeah, so, the, so the, the, the guided setup that I have that I just described, and I also have a uh, follow-up automation um, package that I set up and install. That one is just because it has content and, and a bunch of cool things. Um, doesn't really need to have any inner, you know, as far as any guided interaction. Um, watching, watching me and my team copy and paste stuff in your system is gonna be really boring. Um, so that is, that is the one, that That's is the one funny. basically like, you know, done for you service um, that I do provide. And uh, it's basically leveraging the Chime AI bot, which honestly, I will say this even behind Randy's back, if you are going to Chime and not using the Chime AI bot, you are doing a disservice to your business. I have the I bottom agree. line. I've had yeah. the bot for a year now, and I wish I would have turned it on as soon as it came out in the, you know, I think it was early, early in 2020, January, 2020. I didn't turn mine on until uh, August of 2020. So um, that was my big mistake, but I'm never shutting that thing off. It's worth the money. So um, it basically use, utilizes the AI chat bot as a first line qualifier. Then based off of that conversation, when the bot tags the leads with specific leads is how, how that conversation went or lack thereof, then it basically triages or sorts into pipelines that I created, which are simplified. And then once there, the nurturing campaigns start. And as they interact with the system, meaning the website and the uh, smart plans that are kicked out, as they get warmer, they move up in temperature in the pipelines. And as they back away, they move it. And when there's a qualified hot lead ready to basically write an offer or list their house within the next 30 days, you get notification as well as a text notification. Um, I use the same thing and I'm from internet leads, I'm getting about 10 to 15% of the leads that are coming in are converted within 30 days to a face-to-face -face appointment. Damn, dude. Amazing. And All then right, 98 percent so. of that is automated. I only do about two percent manual follow-up. Two questions. Yes. What's the, what's the cost? The uh, CRM automation is a one-time fee of 9.99. Okay. Takes about a week, week and a half to install. 
And then, and then the uh, guided setup is uh, one hour one hour Zoom calls. You record on your end for your retention and reference in the future. That's $100 an hour. What about if I don't want to do this shit and I want you to do it all? How much is that? <laughs> is there a price for that? Because I don't have the time, right? I, that's why I'm just telling you what agents are thinking. Right. Yeah, I don't know. No, and I, I am going to resist as much, of, as, much as, as much as possible of doing the cookie cutter setup. Because again, you're, you're not, there, there, there's not a lot of value it's it's you know i don't have time i have money here go do stuff and then it's going to be hey i have no idea what this is like like what do you, do you want to walk me through what you did like dude that's, that's true then you'll be lost and I, I, I'm, I'm trying to get away from that because it's like man yeah. you need to be in your business when you're doing this kind of stuff well here's, so that here's my thing to that Adam, I probably would bring in my uh, Jacob, who is in the background here, my, mm -hmm. my lead coordinator, the person handling the CRM, your admin, your executive admin, whatever that is. And I'd be like, you're going to sit down with, with Adam for however long this takes, three, yep. four, five sessions, I don't care. Yep. And he's going to set up this part over here for $9.99 as well. I want you to fully understand this because I don't have time to do this. I'm prospecting. I'm following up with leads. Right, that's what I would do. Jake says hours. <laughs> yep. Yep. See, yeah, in that case, like if, if somebody has a team, they have like a database manager, they have they have quote unquote a nerd that deals that's like, hey, you're gonna be the CRM person. It doesn't matter if it's the team owner, the broker, or somebody. I need somebody that represents your organization that's gonna be the point person that basically say, All right, you're on the other side of Zoom with me, let's go. Jake, that's you, buddy. I just nominated you. <laughs> Uh, he is the nerd. I know it. All right, uh, Adam, I'm going to do this with you. Uh, that's that's really what prompted this whole webinar. I'm like, can we do this with Adam so I understand what he does and I can hire him? <laughs> well, it's also, it's also because no one's willing to have this conversation. Like, what technology company is willing to talk to you about onboarding or about, about the switching over process? Nobody. And, and the reason is it's a scary, it's the biggest reason why people don't move is because it's the hardest part. But Chime is not afraid to have that conversation because we know that we can help you. We have resources to help you. There are other Chime clients who will help you. And it's going to be one of the best moves you can make for your business. Um, you can see with what Adam said, he said you converted 10 to 15% of your online leads to face-to-face -to -face appointments within 30 days. Like, has has any other technology company done that? No, like it's it's just the AI is the best. The website's one of the best. Um, the, the the proof is in the numbers. You can see here. Um, it's crazy. I, I don't see why you wouldn't do it. Yeah, and Anita asked, "Is this just for teams?" And I said, "No, it's for single agents and also brokerages." Yeah, too. we have different packages. We have different packages. Yeah. So yeah. it's not a, it's Wild. not a one size fits all product Like yeah. a lot of other products are out there. We've, we have a very big development team, so yeah. we can create products for the appropriate market. Yeah. Whether basically, whether your business is, is mild or wild, chime can, chime can yeah, mild <laughs> or wild. There it is. There it is. Uh, I love that. All right, guys, anything else, Adam, Randy, anything I missed that you wanted to cover? Mm. I don't think so. Hmm. Oh, wait. Uh, Adam, how the hell do awesome. people get a hold of you? Oh, uh, chimesetup.com. Hold on. Chimesetup.com. And then there you go. Chimesetup. Hopefully that's right, Adam. Yes. Check. And then obviously, if you're interested in Chime, you can always get a hold of me or Randy in the Facebook okay. group for Lab Code Agents or just click on the link that. Jake, let me see. Jake, did you repost that one up? Maybe. Uh, yeah, he did. And Anita has one question. She says, "Hmm, spending approximately fifteen hundred to two thousand dollars to switch CRMs is expensive. Um, How much are you going to spend in medical expenses dealing with the headaches of that first system?" <laughs> <laughs> That's a, I mean, look. Anita, but, but here's here, here's the beauty. So the follow up package, right, is a one time fee. That is going to directly relate, and and you you can see that result on the bottom line where it's the same thing. And and, and I I totally get it. A thousand dollars for something that's like okay cool. Well, guess what? When you pay a twenty five percent referral fee, you're usually spending three or four times that just to get a lead. So keep that in perspective. Um, also, the the beauty of the 
per hour as needed guided setup. If you only have a $500 budget that you, that you can justify spending on that. Cool. You got five hours of my time. Let's go. And yeah. I, I'm just like this here. Like <laughs> it starts, we record, let's go. I would, I'll say this as well. Um, you're not switching to a CRM for a day or for a month or even for a year. Uh, this is a move that will last your career. So yeah. my question to you, just you being the general you, is how much longer do you plan on being in real estate? If your timeline to be out of real estate is six, 12 months, yeah, like, don't worry about it. You're fine. You're, 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 you're over the hill. If your timeline to be in real estate is any longer than 24 months, then this is the best decision that you'll make because it will set a foundation for your business to make more money than you could possibly imagine. So yeah, I think I think you're doing it right. You're, you're just outsourcing it to be set up correctly from the very first time and not worrying about it. The biggest challenge that most people who have CRMs have is the inability to use all of its functions and to use it effectively. And yeah. that's what Adam helps you do with with Chime. And, and the Pareto principle is alive and well. 80% of the agents that I've ever talked with only use about 20, 25% of the features that the system that they currently use. So <laughs> I agree, man. I, agree. I, I, put your, I put your link up there. I put the chime link up there. Uh, Randy, on the in the Facebook group where I posted the other thing about what chime does with postcards and smart plans, because yes. we didn't get into that here because it's different. But I already have uh, Craig Bertrand is interested mm -hmm. and, and there's a few other people on there as well. So jump on that one. Spencer is already talking to Greg. Um, he already texted me and told me and as well as uh, Susan as well. So if y'all are interested in Chime, you can find me in the Lab Codes group. If you're interested in Chime, you can find Spencer Linquist or Andrew Wardle. We're usually lurking about somewhere in there. Um, how do people get a hold of you, Randy? Um, sh shoot me a um, shoot me a message. Um, Randy again, at chimeink.com. Randy dot Carol at chimeink.com. Randy dot Carol. And how do you two spell R's, your last name? C A R R R O L L. Got it. Two R's, two L's. Yep. You know I got yep. it right. All right, and then there you go. And if you're going to switch, or you're already with Chime and you need help, go to Adam, please. Yep. All right, Thank you, everybody. Thank you.